enough. Do you think this discussion of mental health in football has had enough with young people? No, not at no. all. Um, I've I've seen already professionals at the game um, that have been co- that are coaches in uh, football league clubs. I'm not going to specify who or whatever, but I, I've seen coaches that are already going at this and saying. Oh, like how at your age and all of these things, like you wanted, you wanted to become a footballer, but you're not strong enough and all of these things. Like, oh, like, and then they were trying to justify that it was right for that to happen. And I'm just there thinking like, you know, this is the type of mentality where that's why a lot of players are scared to talk to people because they, yeah. they feel like they're going to be judged immediately. A lot of, a lot of people, actually. a lot of, a lot of people. And it's not just football coaches. I think football coaches and like staff involved in football yet are very very harsh when you let them know that you want to play football like you want to take football seriously very harsh about yeah. no, because you know why you want to take because you know why because they cause, let's let's be let's be real like football like the football world in general it is harsh it can be harsh on certain people yeah, yeah. so so that's so i i get why certain i get why certain coaches a lot of co- or coaches in the football industry are hard on players because they know it's hard and if they see someone that's not mentally strong for that year and like in their eyes they're trying to say like well let me try to toughen up the kid in it so they kind of say them type of, type of things here to ca- try to toughen you up and try to get you yeah. ready for which when you make, make it that 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 everyone, which makes a lot of sense huh? no 100% 100% which, it doesn't work with everyone in it because we even because we even we, we even have that us like when we coach kids in, in big kids as well not everyone you can't talk to everyone the same way that you might talk. Yeah. Like I can't, talk, like I can't talk. I can't talk to certain people the way I talk to my cousin, my cousin Alvo. I can shout at him; he can handle it. But then there's other kids there that can't really handle it. They'll be like, "Oh, like, I'm not gonna play no ball," or they're just gonna do their kind of madness and just talk, 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 and and disturb the the whole session. So yeah, certain players can handle that that strong and you know get on talk, and some some players can't. That's true. I think with that, with that, yeah. It makes sense that like, when coaches do it, it makes a lot of sense. Like that's when you get why they're being so harsh on you. But I'm talking about everyone. Like even when you were yeah. in school and you were to tell someone like I want to, I want to take people seriously, it doesn't mean that like you're locking enough everything. But when you tell them I want to take football seriously, it's so easy for them to say, oh, like they start to mention, oh, the, you know, it's like it's understandable. But at the same time, it's just like, do you like even try to motivate the kid before you tell them? You know, oh, you're not gonna make it. Like you know, with like that, you got, you got a one percent chance of making it in football. Yeah, and like billion yeah, a lot people, of that. Yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah, a lot of that too. It's true. You know, you know, with that, right? Like, I feel like for a lot of people, especially if you're not involved in football, I feel like it's a spite thing. Like yeah. a lot of people just don't want to, especially nowadays, they don't want to see you prosper. And like, if they, especially if they've never reached to that specific level. Whenever yeah. they see somebody else make it, they'll find any type of way to try to change things around to yeah, prevent yeah, you from yeah. succeeding. And that's that's yeah. just the worst mentality that I usually like. You see that a lot, especially in at lower levels, um, where just people just doesn't don't want to see you shine. A lot of people who don't know a lot about what you're doing with football or with football in general, and that it's easy for them to let you know how you're not going to be a footballer before they try to motivate you into actually becoming one. Mm. A lot of that goes on. So I, then I it's a, understandable I why. Go on. Everyone, what's what's been your worst experience football wise? Like in terms of being involved in a team <laughs> and with your coach, like on a mental health level, where you thought about yeah. well, my mine was similar to Danny's. It was um I was at I think yeah, no, I was at a club. I can't remember what club it was. I was when I was in sixth form actually, and I was at a club with with a couple of the boys I went to my school as well, and they were playing. Like some of them were playing actually, but some of them couldn't. Like it wasn't. It was clear that they weren't serious about football. Like at the time, there were a lot of like a lot of us. I think within our group, yeah, we have a lot of people who know a lot about football who are very good playing. But will talk more than they actually play. Yeah. There's a there's a few of us in our group that have that. But there's a lot of us who will be like, you know what? Yeah, let's go this day. Let's go play. Um, and when it comes to it, they're serious about it. Like it don't it don't end up it's not a joke when we're actually in. 
But yeah, at the time, play, like they were at the team, and I got injured. Well, I say it was my it was my knee as well. But with that, like since I was in, since I was eleven, and I went on my trial for Barnet, like I always had the played my knee as well. So like I would always play anyway. But in when I got to sixth one, that's when I it, like it started to. To like affect the way I walk sometimes and affect the way I sit. Like I couldn't sit down with my knees back for more than like two minutes and stuff like that. Right. So then I went to the physio and obviously I've never been at a club that had a physio, so I'd never have to go and check it out or whatever. I'll just play on it all the time. So when I had the physio, I went to him and told him why let me know where it was and he said I would I couldn't play. Like I just couldn't play and I would have to go to him every training session and do like little exercises and stuff like that. So I wasn't playing. And my team was getting slapped. Like they were losing fair games. They were losing a lot yeah. of games. So it was just it was annoying sitting down and having to watch and then see your team lose. And even if you felt like you could play it and I told Commander, yeah, like I feel like I can play, you'd still say no because like no. like I haven't they haven't had an update. The coach hasn't had an update on if I could play or not. So I still had to sit down yeah. and, and I wasn't able to play. So that was the worst. And with that I put on a bit of weight in, in six form as well, so it was just like, oh, like I felt like I was losing it a bit. So, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. I think that was the first time like I ever felt like, right, like, mm-hmm. like this is peak, man. Oh, I've actually got a bit of a bit of a mad one. For me, it was when I was uh, sixteen. Um, I just turned. I was turned. No, I was turning sixteen on the summer. I went to um, Madeira for trials for a League One team. Um, and at the time, I was taking football proper serious. Um, so I went there for trials. I done really well when I got accepted. It went to me a contract till like a two year contract till I was eighteen. Um, but obviously, because I was under eighteen, I couldn't stay in the accommodation they kept for young players in it because I was, I was too young. I used to be eighteen. Yeah. So obviously, I needed to stay with my next of kin that was obviously in the Um And that was uh, my next of kin was my godparents in it. And I ain't trying to get into the whole thing, but. Um, mm-hmm. it, it comes down to what John touched upon as well, the whole spitefulness and, and people don't want to see you do well. So it started to create a lot of politics between my half of the family and then the other half of the family and me sitting there and an extra person there. It got so it got it got so problematic where it nearly caused like a feud between my family and that side of the family I was like, what to get this I'm going back to London and you know I, I don't want to do this because it's going to cause um such a big thing you know i don't want to ruin relationships blah, blah, blah. um so i've come back to london now and then touching on what we've done i quit so i was like you know what i'm fed up with football i was in such a bad ment- um mental state i put on so much weight quit football like college at the time i was going to college coming home eat just staying at home i didn't want to leave the house um so yeah it was proper proper um bad mental state um Deep, man. And that so was you locked off the contract. You didn't even go through the yeah, contract. Yeah, yeah. I told him I'm, I can't, I'm gonna go back to London. I don't, I don't, I don't I can commit wow. to it, innit? Yeah. So yeah, it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit of a mad one. Um, that's that's true. Yeah. It's, it's fair, and you know, it's mad. It's the city. You never really regret anything you do in life. I believe everything happens mm-hmm. for a reason. But and that's specifically more that I do regret, man. I tell you kind of gone for it no matter what people thought and she just firmed it for them two years man you never know where i could have been especially when it i think especially when it's family involved it makes it a whole lot more difficult yeah the point where i was like nah people that like, yeah man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that bro, man. what about you Ajay? yeah let me think i had one when i was younger like when i was younger I had a trial for Fulham, but I didn't get accepted. And for like a year after that, for like a year, I didn't. I stopped. I stopped kicking ball in it. And after that, I just put on bare weight, like got fat, like bare Ooh. fat, like my face, my belly, everything. And I just, and I stopped kicking ball for like a year and a half. Just got put on bare weight. I was struggling to lose that weight. But there was like a, there was like a year in school. I think it was like year nine, where I started to realize that like, I was to keep keep kicking ball, keep kicking ball, and I started losing weight slowly. Like mm. I think like starting year eleven, I started to lose that weight and like starting to push myself into football. But yeah, 
but yeah, it was like one year when I had tried to follow when I was younger, and and they was they rejected me. And they're like, no, nah, you can't. You're too small, stuff like that. It was like not too strong enough. They were saying things like that, and then I was like, you are like you year eight, I swear. No, nah, I, I was younger. I was like yes, I was in year six or something. Oh, how big and strong did they want you to be in year six, bro? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bro, there was like, bro, there was, like there was center there was backs that were cool, bro. So no, if man, you look at football now, if you look at football now, yeah, in, in youth teams, yeah, they look tw- twenty plus. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Seventeen, eighteen, they look twenty plus. They look older than us. That's how crazy it is. Hey, yeah. them fourteen-year-old youths up out in France and that. Yeah, that yeah. man are lying crazy. about their age. <laughs> <lying about> <laughs> Them men are 25 with at least a <laughs> one kid at least. They're lying about it. And, <laughs> and it's not only that they're, oh, they're very good footballers as well. Yeah. They're 100%. very good footballers as well. But like, yeah, that, crazy. that was me when I was, that was, me when I was younger though, man. Because when I was a wing, I was a winger striker and they had like tall black people there in it. And I was <laughs> and I was small in it. I was a small Johnny. Like I wasn't tall in it. And they just said, no, nah, like we don't want you in it. And I just stopped kicking ball for like a whole year and a bit. And mad, mad weight. Bunny, man. Oh, that's deep, man. But what it's about? deep though. When you feel that pain, when they when they reject you, you can feel it though, isn't it? Like, mm, but shit. you just have to have that mentality to push mm. push forward and open open certain and do something with your life. And yeah. that's what I did when I was younger, I, I didn't have I didn't have that mentality to do that in it. And I feel like mm. if I had that mentality to carry on kicking ball. After that day, I feel like I could be a better person than I am now. Mm. What about what about you, Wesley? Um, I've had mm, kind of a view because well, when I was younger, my mum wasn't really on me, keen on me playing football in it because of um because of her dad in it. Her dad was professional football a professional footballer as well. Okay. And then he got injured. And then they told him that he couldn't play football because of his knee. And then he went in, like, into coaching, but then he started drinking bears, innit? So he started drinking bears. So like, my mum had that that f- kind of phobia, yeah. like, right, I don't want my son to be the same kind of thing, innit? So mm-hmm. every time I would, like, go football, or my brother would take me when I was proper young, she would always be like, you know, yes and no, yes and no. So then didn't really take it too too serious when I was younger, innit? But then... Only when I hit like maybe like uh, yeah, eleven, that's when she kind of accepted it and just let like let me be in it, let me take football more serious. And then when I got into college, and once I had an injury on my knee, and I was out for like a couple, I think maybe like four months, and then I couldn't play in it. So then I was just getting a bit fat. And then on my first game that I got back, I dislocated my elbow, so like it messed me up. It messed me up, bro. I'm telling you, it messed me up, bro. I messed up my knee, and then on the first game I came back now when I played for my college, I messed up my, I dislocated my elbow, and then that just like, I, then I was out for like, I was out for like another six months. Mm-hmm. I couldn't play in it because I had a cast on for like four months or like three months. I had a cast on, and then when I took it off, I didn't have the full joint movement in it on my, mm-hmm. on my elbow in it, so I couldn't play contact in it. I could play football. But I could go training, but I couldn't co- play contact in it. So I'd go training, go watch games, and I couldn't do it. Just couldn't. And I decided putting on a bit of weight and everything. But I think that's probably the most like where it hit me that mentally kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, mm. I've heard a lot of bad ones though. Like, like I remember my brother when he was I think around our age now as well. He got signed for for Yodel, and my dad said we're moving to France. Hello. Just like that. Just like that. Sign. Yeah. Got signed for Yeovil. Everything like been going to play for Yeovil when you said we're moving to France. Oh, huh? Did you get moved? Yeah, it moved. You have to go, innit? How old is he? How old is your brother? What happened? Now, no, this not now. This was when he was younger, innit? When yeah, he was how old is he? He played football all the time. How old is he when he what happened? Yeah. Exactly. We were around my age, I think it was 19, 20, oh, yeah, 19, 20. How old is he now? Obviously, my oldest brother, isn't it? My oh, oldest brother. Oh, He's oh, the one okay, that's okay. always into football. So that was just like, it was peak. That's peak, so. 
That can make you feel resentment, you know. I won't lie yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah, it actually could. It actually could, you know. So that was my that was my big break, and you're telling me about a new country. Mm. Like, bro, when I used to get when I was younger, I used to get like I used to be angry at my mom because mom never used to like 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 me playing football, wouldn't it? Like she wasn't too mm. keen. Like I remember when I was younger, young, young. My mother taught me like to just follow me. Like, follow nah, I wouldn't would do it. And I got in, but my mom didn't want me in it because I was young in it. So at that time, I was like, you know, I was proper young, so I was just gonna listen to what my, what my mom says, isn't it? But then when mm. my like my dad left the house and stuff, and then she would see that I would just, I would constantly want to play football in it, and like she would yeah. constantly fight against me, and it took a bit where she just like right, she, let, she just let me be, do what I want to do, you know, play let me play football in it, and then see where it goes. Yeah, you know what, you know what, hey, it's, a, yeah, hey, it's, an, it's, a, it's an interesting story to say the least, like, um, so so last year, 2019, uh, I was out in America, and um, I, I moved to a new team, and it was it was a really good, like, cool experience, and uh, started off really well, I felt like, like, one of the jokers on the team, everything was just lined up perfectly, and, mm. um, then quite a lot of like my friends and like teammates left the team and we had like a massive turnaround of players and i remember at the start of the season i got injured which meant like i injured my wrist which meant that i won't be able to play in goal for most of the season um and i went on to try to play outfield i started off really well got an assist nearly got myself a goal all of these things but um there was a lot of spite on the team because I was a goalkeeper that changed into a striker just yeah. for the season and stuff like that. So um, I very quickly lost a lot of faith in the dressing room. Like a lot of people just stopped trusting me. And uh, if it was like the outfield players, uh, all the coaches and everything. And it went from a guy that would always be trying his hardest in training to a guy that wouldn't even travel with the team. Yeah. Um, mm. It got really depressing, like really, really depressing, especially in a city that had absolutely nothing to do over there. Um, I would literally spend my days just at home playing video games because uh, I literally couldn't do anything. I, my mm. team was like five hours away and they couldn't even take me. There wasn't space. Um, so I went through the maddest of thoughts in my head. I, that, that's when the quickest of self-doubt came in. I really thought to myself, like, am I really good enough to carry on pursuing this? Like, if if all my teammates and all the coaches are believing so, like, what now? Like, I'd still go to train and outperform my heart out, but it was it was it was really depressing. Like, and mm. that's that's when your thoughts start catching up with you. I, I can't lie, I had a few questionable thoughts in my head, but I chose it's to stick it out. What's the matter? Be real, be real. Be real. <laughs> I was there thinking to myself, like, raw, like, at least you had nothing around me, you know what I'm saying? Because, um, you know, I was far from my family. I lost the majority of my friends because they, they, they moved to another team. I didn't have um, any relationships or anything over there. Or, like, I tried to limit myself because of season. And, like, it got to me. It got to me. I was thinking, like, oh, shit, like, what do I do now? Like, I wanted to give up on ev everything. But at mm -hmm. the same time, I was like, okay, let me let me pat myself up, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, and then and then 2020 rolled around. Uh, I healed from my injury, went back into training with a couple semi-pro teams over here, and I quickly realised that it was just like a mirage, that whatever mm -hmm. I was living out there wasn't the true reality of what I'm actually capable of, mm -hmm. and um, it was it was good to get that. And within two months of that one of my biggest opportunities for a very long time came about in being able to play with under the radar which is a youtube team uh that's that's you know that's yeah it's you know it's it was a very cool experience and that, that definitely changed my life because <laughs> um, i started enjoying football again because as i said before it literally felt like a chore like if i'm going to training and i'm trying all my hardest to, to become something and there's no backing from the coaches. I was I was the quickest guy on my team, the hardest uh, workout at times. Just didn't even get a look at. The, the, the coaches never even spoke to me before, saying, "Oh yeah, I like what you're doing." They'll literally just brush me off. But now I ended up with under the radar. The, the support over there is just 
a bit of basic, crazy, man. you know. Like family over there, man. Exactly, you know, and that's 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 what I needed, and it's it, and it's crazy to think just what what a couple bobs can do to a person, you know. I went from a guy that literally was willing to give up on everything, was thinking, okay, what what am I doing with football to getting back out there and. Uh, I don't want to ruin the next two episodes of Under the Radar, but uh, you can definitely see that that my luck turned around. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just crazy. Like that's that's why mental health. I didn't feel like I can speak to anyone. I didn't even mm-hmm. want to speak to my family, you know, because I felt like I was like, oh, my family doesn't know nothing about football. Like, why would I want to speak to them? But it was a yeah. bigger picture than than just football at that stage. So it was painful, a hundred percent. Hey man. Yeah, yeah, but you see, at that moment, like you're, 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 you're so blindsided, like you don't, you don't believe that. You're literally just there thinking, ah, you know, like I've literally put. If if this is where I stop, because at, at my head I was like, this isn't the highest level. Like I feel like I can do much better than this. And if I get stopped at this hurdle. You're like, oh, I can't just force mm. myself to take a couple steps back. You know what I'm saying? My friend, and, tough yeah. times never last. <laughs> tough last. times never last. Exactly. Perfectly said. That's, <laughs> that's my last <laughs> <laughs> right, let me see, Let me hear a story about you, fam. <laughs> okay, I knew you were going to say it. I knew you were going to say it. Why did you do me up with him? Why did you do me up with him? Actually, I've not. I've got one. I've got one. I've got one still. I've got one still. Therefore, I remember they were telling me they played Manchester United. Let me, let me, let me. Oh, last year. I watched that for nothing. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cap. I'm gonna be so real. I'm gonna be so real. Yeah. My dad, my lost his money. He came from Ghana. He was playing here, innit? But he supports Arsenal. That's why I support Arsenal too. I was gonna say, is it Essien? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I wish. I wish. I wish. Um, he, he loves it. So obviously, you've got a son now. You're thinking, yeah, I'm gonna put him on football, like, train him. Blah, blah, blah. When he's taking me to park and that, yeah, when he's dashing the ball up like 15 feet in the air, can you control it? I'm thinking, ah, thinking, brother, I'm not controlling it now. And he's ah, and he's like, so I'm not controlling the ball now. Like, getting the shots here and there. I had to put me on for time. I was mad short. I was like, you know what? Bum foot me. I want to play basketball. That's how mad I was. I said basketball. <laughs> I love like, basketball. With money. Yeah. And that was the only. That was the only one I think. <laughs> on that one, I'm thinking about. But when you got to talk at the beginning, I'm thinking about expectations and family expectations. Yeah. Are like, that when your family expects a lot from you, or they put their their dreams on you, family's long. Yeah. And obviously, I came out of it. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm not a basketball player. So I don't like basketball. Like, obviously, I love football. Like, I played it a bit when I was young. I wouldn't say I took it seriously that like, I wanted to be a baller, but I always love football. But I think that, thinking, and I was, obviously I don't, I think it, it can only be worse for children of professional football players. Like, I look at Ronaldo, and the way he treats his son, and how they bang ball and that. Well, first time, like, I always try to be son hate football. Big man. Ronaldo, oh, because keep it, your, your dad is just trying to Ronaldo. Yeah, you know, there's always a flip side. There's always a flip side to that, though. Because if he big. if he was growing up and he didn't like it, that's when it would be like, oh, do you know what I mean? Like when exactly. I would have had to, like it would have been a bit difficult for him to deal with that because, like, mm. I'm arguably, if not, I'm the best player in the world at what I exactly. do. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So if my son is not trying to live up to what the legacy, <laughs> I've been, it's a bit like, rah. Like, what do you mean you're not trying to do that? <laughs> you know, you know what, you know what? I, I personally feel like it's, I feel like it's the, it's the neighborhood dads that are probably the ones that put the most pressure because they usually they're mm. like, oh, I didn't make it or I didn't get that far. I need to have somebody take on my legacy and actually get there. So when they don't, when they haven't made it, they are still living out the dream with their kids. Cause like with, with, with like professionals you, you get your exceptions you know what i'm saying you've got like brooklyn beckham and all of these things and like um you know there's, there's still those moments but the dads from the neighborhoods you know what i'm saying yeah but I, feel oh. like, I feel like media's got a big part to do with things like that as well though yeah like, media is, like the media yeah, they, they expect you to be like to be that certain person Mm-hmm. And if you can't live to that expectation, they start saying things. They're saying, oh, he's not good enough. This, 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 this. Yeah. So like, 
but like really and truly, tra- you don't know what's going behind closed doors. Like he can be trying his hardest to be this person, mm-hmm. trying exactly. to get to that expectation that you yeah. don't want. Like, you know what is deep? You know what is deep, Andre? You know what is deep? Imagine now, let's say for example, um, what's David Beckham's son's name again? Brooklyn. Yeah. Brooklyn. Imagine now he's banging ball. He can be decent, but then the first thing is, ah, oh, he's not as good as his dad, man. Uh, yeah. You know, but that's where media needs to allow it. Like, media needs that's to allow that, that type of thing. Like, you can't mm-hmm. expect your son to be as good as them. Like, your son is as good as him. Like, if whatever he wants to do or how good he wants to become, that's on him. Like, it's not on you, the media. That's what that he wants. Either, either, like, you're good enough or you're yeah. better than what your what your legacy is mm-hmm. right? I mean, like you either try to be better than that or you're good enough to play yeah i mean you, you know what thing, you know i mean hey that's 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 when you you see like the the weak uh you know out of the the the, be- the betters because you could either be michael jordan's kids that actually done absolutely nothing when it comes down to basketball yeah. or you could be yeah. del curry's Bond. uh kid Steph Curry, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, One yeah, of the yeah, greatest yeah. shooters of all time. So, um, but I mean, you kind of expect that. That's what what media is kind of about. You know, they yeah. they try to get as much of a reaction of anyone at this moment. Um, so, you know, you can there's also there's, be, like, yeah. There's like a video. Of what I'm, that's I'm that's what they live for. Yeah. Mm, exactly. What were you saying, Andre? Oh, no, I was saying that there's. I was watching something on YouTube about Tam, Tam Abraham. He was saying how there was a, there was a ta- the period of time where he wasn't scoring any type of goals for any league or like any competition, and apparently the fans just were saying um, racist, racist things. To oh him. yeah, yeah. And, and after he started scoring goals, everyone started bigging him up, bigging, bigging him up. Only he was your your big up son. Like, even even even, even when like, this just, this racism thing, but that's not even getting that because even when man even when man are scoring, even like, there's a you in Dortmund who's banging for his table is smacking in goals. Yeah, yeah. My, my my goal. goal. Stuff like that. He looks at the ball and the ball's in the goal, and he's still getting <laughs> racism. Do you know what I mean? So it's like with the racism thing, it's like it's gonna happen either way. That's that's another Whether topic. You're doing bad that's or good. <laughs> yeah, that's another topic, man. Hey, another those topic. writing that one down. I'm getting prepared. <laughs> well, that is, let's let's end it with Danny. Yeah, that race yeah. Football, yeah so <laughs> when when I was like, I'll say 15, 14, mm. like, in, in like a summer, so like in one month, I grew from like five, three to like six foot, innit? <laughs> I wish. I wish. So, I so wish. That's, 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 that's that milk. That's that milk. Hey, that's that Portuguese milk, bro. Milk. 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 I don't know what, what it was. What milk were you drinking, fam? No, no, no. No, it was. I went to Madeira. No, it was. I went to Madeira. And then I came back and I was just cool. And I, I don't know what. I, I, I know exactly how it was. Stephen and Danny, what's this Madeira people doing to you? Aye, 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 it's a ritual. It's a ritual. It's a ritual. You can't, can't say. But aye, yeah. Stephen's just then... slowing it, but watch. Aye, yeah. Stephen can't do anything else about that, innit? But Danny's like, ah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, go on. And then when I came back, I came back to play my first school game for secondary school. And then um, when I tried to pass the ball, the first kick, my back and my knee just like that like, i couldn't really like do that you know that motion that like, kicking the ball mm. hurt my back and my knee at the same time so then i had to just come off and then i went to the doctor the next day to the hospital and they said that my knees were my joints were overgrown on my knees and my spine is twisted ah. oh so, yeah so then I, I was out for football for like a year and a bit but the only thing that made it harder about it is because that like, Stephen will know in secondary we'll have houses in it so it'll be like house football or dream team like stuff like that so like the little things of like oh do you want to come play football outside with your friends and it was just those little things that'll make it hard that mm. I, I won't be able to kick ball but I'm just seeing outside my window all my friends kicking ball and I'm just there playing like playing games or watching videos like it's just it, like it's a bit depressing but mm. I know uh, and, yeah that ghost spot didn't help fam I go split. No, I didn't. It was cool the little. Hey, that was so gosh, look at him. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm happy to show. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Should have said on this side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing.